I've officially been a full-time penetration tester for over a year now, and while the journey to get here was both fun and exciting, and I have much to look forward to, I'll be honest, there are some aspects of the job that I simply wasn't prepared for. Training taught me how to exploit machines and certifications taught me how to pass exams, but nothing truly prepared me for what it's like to do this work in the real world, day in and day out, under pressure for actual clients. In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you the top five things I wish I understood better before I entered the field. For those who only want the quick summary, here's what you need to know. One, real world networks are massive compared to training labs. This is why time management and task prioritization are essential skills once you become a full-time penetration tester. These are skills that training oftentimes fails to prepare you for. Two, real world environments are far more secure than training labs. This makes finding critical vulnerabilities not only harder, but more frustrating for pen testers who are used to hacking intentionally vulnerable systems. Three, in the real world, clients may dispute your findings. They do this because sometimes they don't understand the finding or sometimes they just wanna look better on the report. Either way, it is essential to have good ethical judgment, clear communication, and high standards of excellence. Four, pen testing looks exciting from the outside, but in reality, it's more about documenting vulnerabilities than it is hacking like in Mr. Robot. If you want that thrill, you should consider a path into red teaming. Even then, I'm so convinced it's still not like your favorite Darknet Diaries episode. Five, I thought I would be immune to it and I thought it was a little bit of a myth, but burnout and pen testing is real and it sneaks in when the excitement starts to fade and the grind starts to set in, especially if you are pursuing other demanding pursuits. For me, that was grad school and content creation. For you, that might be raising a family or getting a gold medal in underwater basket weaving. Despite these challenges, becoming a penetration tester has been a great decision for me and I wouldn't trade it for anything. If that high level summary was all you needed, feel free to click off the video now. But before you go, if you got any value out of this video whatsoever, do me a small favor and like the video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. Now, for those who are aiming to become future leads in this field and want the full breakdown, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Kaiser Clark. I have been in the cybersecurity field for over seven years now, and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker, and I'm here to grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. First up, we have the size of the networks. In the real world, most networks have at least a dozen machines on them. Many have hundreds of machines, and some even have thousands. It's rare to come across a network that has a single digit host count. Now compare that to certification exams and training labs, which almost always has network sizes in the single digits. I expected real world networks to be larger, but I wasn't quite ready for how difficult it is to actually cover an entire network during most penetration tests. It's frustrating because you're trained to be thorough, yet more often than not, parts of the network go untouched. That's why time management and task prioritization is a critical skill set, and honestly, most training doesn't teach you that. And in my opinion, that's why the OSCP is still the gold standard in penetration testing certifications because of that strict time constraints that they put on you during that exam. Next up, we have strong security postures. During training, certification exams, and CTF challenges, Machines, networks, and applications are deliberately built to be insecure. In the real world, no app, no network, and no machine is intentionally left insecure. As you might expect, this makes hacking in the real world much harder than what you're used to in training environments. Critical and exploitable vulnerabilities still exist, but they're becoming less common thanks to growing cybersecurity awareness. In my experience, the bulk of my clients have already went through multiple penetration tests before I even arrived. So more often than not, the obvious vulnerabilities are already patched. This can be frustrating for pen testers who are trained to seek out root access and domain admin. Now for the one that threw me off the most when I entered this field, and that is clients arguing findings. When you find valid findings, clients will sometimes, though not always, push back. Some argue the severity, saying that it should be lower, while others will argue that it's not even a finding at all. 
Some clients want a clean report for compliance or public relations reasons. Others just don't want stakeholders knowing their environment has holes. And sometimes they argue simply because they don't understand the finding or its severity. This is why clear communication, both written and verbal, is absolutely critical when you present your findings. You also have to understand the ethics involved here. If you stay on your ground, you are at risk of upsetting a client and they very well could fire you and hire somebody else. But watering down or removing a finding just to make a client feel better is disingenuous, unethical, and harmful to the overall cybersecurity community. It also damages you and your firm's credibility. Are there times when adjusting severity or removing a finding makes sense? Yes, absolutely but it better be for a valid reason. Maybe the client has a compensating control you weren't aware of, that's fair. But don't you ever lower your standards just to keep a client happy. That report could be used by their customers to assess vendors, and if you fudge the truth, it could have real world consequences. The good news is not every client is like this. Some actually take security very seriously and they are genuinely grateful when you uncover findings they didn't know about. In fact, some clients may actually ask you to upgrade the severity of a finding because it helps justify a higher security budget. Overall, the dynamic of clients arguing findings completely caught me off guard when I transitioned from pen test training to pen testing in the real world. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. Pen testing is not as sexy as it seems. The term ethical hacker sounds cool, mysterious, and cinematic, but in reality, it's nothing like the movies or even like the stories you hear in Darknet Diaries. As a pen tester, I rarely feel like a hacker or a threat actor. Honestly, I feel more like QA for IT. Pen testing, contrary to popular belief, doesn't actually emulate threat actors. That is what red teaming is for. During a penetration test, your goal isn't to break in, it's to identify and document as many security vulnerabilities as possible. Even if a critical vulnerability does exist, you usually don't have time to build a custom exploit for it. That is the red teamer's job, not yours. If you spend too much time trying to exploit one thing, you're at risk of leaving the rest of the network or application untouched. That's because as a penetration tester, your engagements will typically last one or two weeks, sometimes three. Now, if you compare that to threat actors and red teamers, they have engagements that last multiple months. Now, if you do have the time to build a custom exploit and break into a network application, yeah, go ahead and absolutely do that. That is a part of being a pen tester. You do have to find the holes in these environments and you have to show proof of concept and what better way to show proof of concept than actually, you know, getting domain admin or root access or dumping a database. But keep in mind, that is not the end all be all. That is not the only objective. You still have to check for other holes in the rest of the environment that you're pen testing. To clarify the difference between red teaming and pen testing, know this. A red teamer's goal is to find a single hole into the crown jewels of an environment and to test out a blue team's response to a cyber attack. Pen testers, on the other hand, are typically not trying to be stealthy, and the goal of the penetration test is to uncover as many vulnerabilities as possible, even if it's not directly exploitable. That's why getting domain admin or dumping entire databases isn't as common as people may think. It's just not the only goal of most tests. This all ties back into the strong security posture point I made earlier. Before I became a penetration tester, I just imagined myself stealthily moving through the network and pivoting from machine to machine, popping shells left and right. And unfortunately, the reality is that's just not the case. And if that's what you're chasing, then your goal is to become a red teamer. And that's actually a title that I aim to achieve one of these days because deep down, I still want to feel like a hacker. And the cold hard truth is I'm not getting that feeling as a penetration tester. Last but not least, burnout is real. Most of the insights I have shared so far has highlighted the less glamorous sides of being a penetration tester. And as you might have guessed, burnout isn't only possible, it's likely. Pen testing, to be frank, simply isn't as fun as I imagined. It's still a job and it's still work at the end of the day. Many professionals have warned us about burnout and I used to wonder, how do people burn out so easily? Are they just slackers or did they get into the field for the wrong reasons? Now, I get it. I used to think that I was immune to burnout because I put the idea of becoming a penetration tester on a pedestal and I had a lot of fun popping shells in the Hack the Box machines and OCP labs and I honestly thought, how could you possibly get tired of this? You can do this for a living? That sounds amazing. But after doing this full time for a year now, I realized that burnout 
is not a myth and it is in fact very real if you leave it unchecked. Back when I was a sysadmin in the Air Force, I trained after hours nearly every day. I had a high motivation to do the labs because I fell in love with the idea of being an ethical hacker. These days I struggle to find the same drive. Why? Because I already spent 8 plus hours a day doing pen testing and honestly it's not as exciting as it once seemed. It is possible to have too much of a good thing after all. Now to be fair, pen testing isn't the only culprit of my burnout that I have experienced. Obviously there's a lot of the things I'm doing outside of pen testing that is contributing to the burnout. For starters, for those who don't know, content creation isn't exactly easy. It's pretty hard to make quality content on a consistent basis. Furthermore, I got my master's degree in cybersecurity and I was a full-time college student on top of being a content creator, on top of being a full-time pen tester. And to further amplify things, I went through a breakup last year I moved four times in one year and I went through a military transition. Huge major life events that happened to me and I'm juggling all of this at once and quite honestly, it burned me out. But it wasn't only pen testing that burned me out, it was a combination of all the things. So if you're chasing a pen testing career and you don't plan on being a content creator or going through grad school, there's a good chance that you won't face burnout nearly as fast as I did. However, do not assume you are safe. Burnout doesn't discriminate and it can creep up on anyone. Now, let me close this video out on a high note. Guys, it's not all doom and gloom. I still love being a penetration tester. Much of what I said so far in this video has been pretty negative and I just wanna be clear that that is not the full picture. I'm not here to gatekeep and I'm not here to discourage you from becoming a penetration tester. It's actually the opposite. My goal is to help you become the best cybersecurity professional you can be and guide you through this career field with honesty as your guide it's my job to highlight the traps and pitfalls you're likely to face so you don't fall into them like i did i wouldn't be doing my job as a content creator if i glossed over the hard parts not many people will talk about this stuff openly which is exactly why this video needed to be made with all that being said man do i love this career i love being a cybersecurity professional and i love being a penetration tester yes it's hard to break into and yes it's hard to balance your time and manage expectations but at the end of the day it's still the best job I've ever had. And that means a lot coming from someone who absolutely loved being cyber defense operations in the United States Air Force. Yes, there are aspects that I miss about that role and there are aspects I miss about being in the military. However, overall, I don't regret transitioning out of that role, out of the military to become a full-time penetration tester as a civilian. And if I had the opportunity to go back and do things differently, I would make the same decisions 10 out of 10 times. I get to work on things I'm passionate about with great people at a great company. I get to work from home, making solid money, doing what I love. All things I once only daydreamed about. I genuinely do not see myself outside of cybersecurity. I do, however, see myself transitioning from pen tester into other ethical hacker roles, such as Red Seamer, like we talked about earlier. Overall, it's been a great ride and I look forward to many more years in this field. If this video helped you out, hit the like button, subscribe and leave a comment. I would love to hear what you are surprised about during your first year of being a full-time pen tester or what you're most feeling unsure about as you're starting your journey. And if you want a crystal clear roadmap to becoming a penetration tester, you have to watch my full guide that walks you through the exact steps that takes you from zero to hired. It's one of the most valuable videos on my channel, so you can't miss it. Click and watch now.